This is Heidi Scott of DIY Dreaming, and I am pretty super excited about the project that we're going to be doing today. We are going to be doing a sweatshirt uh, transformation, and it is inspired by a lady that I saw on Pinterest. Her name, her business name is Stitches by Julia. She uses a sewing machine, but I know that not everyone out there has a sewing machine. And I haven't threaded mine in so long. I'm not sure that I could remember to do that. So we're going to be using some of this stuff. Fabric Fuse. We're going to use um, a fabric hot glue for my Sherbonder. And we're going to be using, I know you can handle this if you're a crafter. We're going to be using a needle and thread. And then um, I pulled out some buttons. I have a few little button ideas. Um, yeah, so those are the basics of what we'll be using today. And I'm going to give you all the measurements. So you might want to get a piece of paper and a pencil out right now. Um, okay, so the, the sweatshirts that I have done this transformation on, are men's sweatshirts. They are Goodfellow brand. Goodfellow and Company. They were $20. These are men's sweatshirts from Target. And I believe they're, they're not 100% cotton. I haven't really found a super great... Uh, okay, this is 40% recycled polyester and 60% cotton. Anyways, these sweatshirts from uh, Target do run a little big. So normally I buy an XL because I want to be able to wash and dry everything. But in this instance, because they have so much polyester in them and they're not likely to shrink a ton, I got a large. So try if you're going to use the same brand, try it on in this store to make sure that you have a size that's going to work for you. All right, so we're going to be making this one over. This one I've already done, and I learned a lot. So I'm going to tell you some of the things that I would do differently. This is the same brand. It's Goodfella. I stenciled the front of it last Sunday during Christ and Crafting. It says Grow in Grace, and then we um, added this embellishment of these this is this fabulous ribbon stuff that you can get at Hobby Lobby. It's like seven or eight dollars, but I bought it when it was 40% off. Um, I don't know what it's called. I don't have the original container, but it's just this pretty ribbon um, that we glued on there using our fabric glue and that fabric fuse. I took the neck off. I'll show you how to do that. I took the band at the bottom off. And I took off um, four inches plus the cuff off the sleeve and I uh, rolled this up and glued it. And um, what I want to say about this is that I'm going to wash it and I'll let you know how it washes. But it does have a little tendency to show where the glue was applied. So next time, and there's still glue strings on here, even though I've worn it once. Next time, I will glue it further inside the cuff. So we're going to be doing this idea, no stencil today, um, but we're going to take it a little bit further and we're going to make some embellishments out of leftover sweatshirt material that look kind of like little flowers. And we're also going to do some slits. Okay, so this is the one that um, so many of you guys asked me, how did I do that? And this is the one we're going to be doing. I just chose this color. I don't know. It doesn't look great on me. It really washes me out, but I think it'll be cute. This is another sweatshirt that I did recently. I'll quit talking in just a second and get started. But this, um, this is a pretty stencil with black ink from MagnoliaDIY.com. And this is Time and True brand Extra Large from Walmart. And these were like $12.88. Um, and I am, this is so oversized. I don't know, maybe I should have gotten a smaller size. But, you know, these big, long, droopy sleeves that you can't push up, they drive me crazy. They make it so that this is not comfortable to wear. So I think at some point this week, I'm going to chop the sleeves off of this one, too. I'll show you how. 
and um, try rolling them up and gluing them and see if it feels a little bit more comfortable. But this is a cute sweatshirt and for $12.88 um, it was pretty good. You do want one that's, um, this is pretty loose and free flowing. You want one I think that's a little uh, form fitting and, and stiffer to do this project that I'm going to show you. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. I've already cut one sleeve off because I have been fiddling around this morning on the embellishment. So let's start as um, the lady in Stitches by Julia says. Let's start with the deconstruction. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is take off my tags. And you can get any brand of sweatshirt um, that you like. This just happened to be what, what was handy and I didn't want to go on a long drive in search of a, in search of a sweatshirt. Okay, I'm going to take this sticker off. I'm going to leave the um, tag on the inside because sometimes it's nice to be able to hang them up like that. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take off the neck. And what I want you to notice is that you don't, there's, um, you don't want to cut down in past where that stitching is, okay? So we're going to cut it off just above that so it will look kind of like this. It makes it look a little bit more finished. And it doesn't matter where you start. I'm just going to start in the back. And I think it's better to cut uh, less off and be able to come back and trim it up neat than to start out taking too much off. So. Okay, so you can see I'm just cutting right above where that stitching is. And once it gets washed, it's going to kind of all uh, roll nicely, I think. So it doesn't matter if it's completely straight. Did I say any of my normal stuff? Hello? Um, I see there's some eyeballs here, like 120 something. But let me know you're here. Um, feel free to ask questions. I'll try to grab some of the questions along the way, but the ones that I miss while I'm live, I will come back and answer later. And I also will get organized a complete supply list that has like the names of these particular sweatshirts. There's nothing very complicated in this project. It is gonna be cute though, I'm excited about the embellishment. I'll show you that in just a minute. Okay, so I'm not going to toss this because who knows? There might be something I can do with it. Now I have that band off that makes sweatshirts sometimes feel kind of uncomfortable. And let's do the sleeves. Okay, so what I decided to do was to take, just remind myself for sure. Okay, I'm taking this whole cuff off, plus I'm taking four inches off above the cuff. So I just am gonna use my pencil. To mark that, and I did the same thing on the other side. what we're creating our embellishments with. Okay, so I have both of those sleeves cut off. Now let's do the bottom. And the bottom is the same deal basically as the top. Um, we're going to cut just below that stitching on the ribbing. You can start wherever you want. I don't think it matters. One single bit.
So I think this could be fun. Um, I think it could be really fun to grab some of your old sweatshirts that you don't like anymore and practice. Um, or just get some inexpensive ones or go to the thrift store. These sweatshirts here were $20. I felt like they were not so expensive that I could I could learn on them. And the sleeve issue with um, sweatshirts is so uncomfortable for me that I tend to not want to wear them if they have the long sleeves that you can't roll up and get them to stay up on your arm. So these I will wear because they are way more comfortable for me. Plus, you could always wear this over the top of a long sleeve t-shirt. If you were wearing it in the dead of winter and you didn't like, it's going to basically have three quarter length sleeves. Okay, so you can see right here that I'm basically just cutting on the ribbing just under that stitching line. And I have an idea for this that I'm going to tell you about. We're not going to do it on this one, but I do want to suggest it because you may want to do it. Thank you so much for the stars. That's awesome. I so appreciate that. this completely finished and let it cure overnight I will wash this and the green one tomorrow I will probably wash them on cold delicate and I'll turn them inside out most likely especially the one with the stencil and the um, little flower and then I may or may not dry them in the dryer I'm not sure but I'll let you know how that all goes. I think this would be a really fun girls get together kind of a project. Um, you know, invite some girlfriends over, your neighbors, your Bible study friends, your workout buddies, your sisters, your mom, your whatever. Um, and have everyone bring a sweatshirt and have everyone bring a pair of scissors and you could you know as a group do this and it would be super fun okay I'm almost finished So the lady who I watched do a sweatshirt transformation, her um, blog is called Stitches by Julia, and she shows all kinds of sewing techniques, like with a sewing machine. Let's take this off. I hate these things. Um, but so I was like, well, could we do this a little simpler? Can it be done? using this fabric fuse, fabric adhesive from Walmart, could a little bit of this cool shot fabric glue be used? And could I just use a, a needle and thread? And um, yeah, you can. Okay, so we're gonna hang on to this because, let me tell you this part right now. If you want, you can um, cut off like a, three, four inch wide section of it. Chubby. It doesn't even, I don't think it even needs to be three. I think I opted for two and a half inches. Okay, and then you can, should I just show you this real quick? I'm not going to do it on this particular sweatshirt, but let, let me show you what I'm talking about. Creating a little band 
to go on the arms if you want. And I'm going to use um, this fabric adhesive or this uh, fabric glue to do this part. So I would hem it first. just by folding both ends over and gluing that down. Oops. I'm thinking that I'm almost out of this kind of glue stick. So hopefully I have enough to get through this project. So see, it's sort of hemmed, and then you just fold We're making basically um, like a hemmed looking strip. So see, I've got this so far. And if I was going to use it, I would do it way more carefully, way more carefully. Okay, so you end up with this, and then we could use this as like a little cuff on the sleeves. We could either sew it on or glue it on. Glue part of it inside the sleeve and then bring the other part outside and up. Um, and once we get our sleeves rolled, I'll show you what I'm talking about. <sighs> this is the thing I don't like about this. It might be my gluing device that is just getting old. But this fabric, hot glue, it just it seems to like seep out of my little gluing device and it wants to get everywhere. Okay, so let's do the sleeves next. And then I'm gonna show you this. And then we'll do the embellishment last. And the embellishment is, ador is adorable, so stay with me. You're gonna, and there's so many different ways you could do it. You could do this project, this whole idea with bling if you wanted. it would be fun. Okay, so I'm just going to basically roll and roll. Let me tell you how wide these cups are. You're going to roll it twice. And then glue it. And I would say this first roll is about an inch roughly. And then I'm going to roll it again. Can you see that? Okay, and then I am going to put a bunch of this glue inside of here and push my cap down into it. And this fabric glue I think I got it at Hobby Lobby. This is a um, Shervander brand and it is specifically for fabric. So what that means is that it can be washed, which is, you would definitely want to wash a sweatshirt at some point. So you wanna make sure that you're using the right kind of glue. Alternatively, you could use this or some other fabric adhesive. This just takes a while to dry. So I'm mostly going to use um, the, this one, just for speed's sake. Okay, and then let me get the very top of this little cuff. And I'm hiding the glue down so it's not poking out like it was on the other one. I'm, pu I'm putting it in further. And then 
if I was gonna do this, let me show you. I am just going to pin it on the inside at the top of the sleeve. And then I would cinch it, whoops, that's on backwards, hang on. Oh no, it's not, my sleeve flipped over. I would probably glue and use um, a sewing needle. Or alternatively, if you have a sewing machine, you could do that. So that would be, that could be pretty cute. Uh, but for this particular design, it might feel a little busy because our embellishments are kind of busy. So let's do the other side, the other sleeve, and then we'll move on to the next part. Okay, my ruler, I think I said that that was about one inch. And if I was making this for someone else, you could secure it with a sew-on button. That's an excellent idea, and that would be adorable. Maybe I will. A lot of times when I'm crafting, I have to do the basic of the craft and then look at it and think on it for a little while before I decide how I want to finish it off. Okay. Let me just compare. This is, seems bigger. Mm, not too bad. Okay, so now I'm just going to put some of this fabric glue inside and push the cuff into it. I can come back and add more glue later. Okay, what was that comment I just missed? Oops. I love it, this idea. I went and bought at Walmart sweatshirts that you recommended, and she doesn't like the sleeves. She might cut them off. She's talking about this one. I got um, I got a sort of a mustardy yellow one too, and I did the craft club, the Magnolia Craft Club stencil from September. On it it's a bunch of sunflowers this one is a pumpkin with sunflowers this is a separate uh, design that you can get from magnoliadiy.com anyways these sweatshirts are $12.88 in the ladies department at Walmart and they wash pretty nice um, the sleeves just drive me crazy though uh, they just don't feel comfortable to me so okay, let's do the other side you can see how quick this comes together. And you know what, if you wanted to do this with a group of friends, you could always save this video or come to my YouTube channel and you could play this quick video for everyone before you get started to see how the project is done and how easy and quick it can be. And, um, and just have, like I said, just have everybody bring their own sweatshirt and, and scissors. And maybe you provide the glue. Um, maybe you provide the glue and um, the place to do it and some, I don't know, some snacks or appetizers or coffee or wine or whatever would be fun. Okay, so... That is the gist of the sleeves. And I will come back later and touch it up a little bit so it's just a little bit more secure. Ooh, and I need to look and see if I have any more. Yikes. Oh, yes, I do. I do have two more of these. So, let's see. All right, 
right, so already this sweatshirt is so much more comfortable, so much more comfortable. And because it's a man's, it's still nice and long. Um, okay, so let's do the neck. You can do it on either side, but we're gonna kind of do like a little asymmetrical cut. get this straight so I can see what I'm doing and I'm going to start out going to the center of my sweatshirt which is about right there let me grab another ruler all right so that's what would be center and you could cut your slit there if you want but um, I'm going to do it off center and I'm using the, the tag with the L as my centering point. And then I'm just gonna go over two or three inches, I think like two, maybe two and a half. And then I'm gonna go straight down from there about three inches. hold this up. Okay, so here's the center right here. I went over to about two and a half inches and then I drew a mark and then I drew a mark three inches long. And you know, this is just, you can adapt these, these inches, these measurements to what you like. If you find, if you did this and you found that it was too revealing, which I don't think it will be, then you could cut this shorter. It's totally up to you. Okay. So, when I'm all finished, um, this is too much to write out. But what I recommend that you do is, if you miss the beginning, come back and watch the whole video again with a piece of paper, draw a sketch of your sweatshirt, and what are the measurements that I've been telling you and um, and see you know if that helps you because I, I wouldn't do a good job typing instructions I think um, so I will make sure that I put several places here the replay so that you can come back later and re-watch this and it'll be easy and convenient for you. All right, I'm just cutting the front straight down. And then let's fix that jaggedy edge right there. Then you could tack this down if you would like. I think for right now I'm just gonna pin it. a little dab of this glue we'll see I'm gonna put some on and we'll see how it works I'll tell you after after I launder it let me see I need to pick that all I'll put just a couple little easy dabs Easy little teeny dots on the um, collar part because I don't want it to be um, lumpy. Okay, so this is what the front looks like now. It's on this side. So we're going to do a little cut up the bottom just to kind of free this up so it's not, although this particular sweatshirt is not um, super 
constricting after I cut that band off. Um, and I'm going to go over about four inches. Let's see, I went down three, I think. And I'm going to go, so I'm going to go over four from the seam. And I'm just going to go up three inches straight. I'm not going to glue this like this. I'm just going to leave it free. You could um, do, a, if you know how to do a blanket stitch, you could do that around the edges. You could do, you could um, do a running stitch. I think this is going to be fine, but I'll let you know. Um, okay, so then let's do the fun part. All right, here's our sweatshirt at this point, and I will. Fiddle with your view. I can see the whole thing. Oh, I'm sorry if you guys can't see the whole thing. I don't know. When I um, when I start on Facebook, it looks like most of the room, most of the screen is from here down. But sometimes it looks like it's from here up. I don't know. I am, um, I'm a pretty decent crafter, but I'm a terrible technology person. Terrible. Okay, so it's going to be so cute. All right, I'm going to just throw that aside. And what we're going to do now is we're going to create some fun embellishments using this. All right, so I want four, four rounds that, that are different sizes. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to cut a big one first. Let's just cut this off. It'll be easier to work with. Okay, and I'm going to cut two at a time because I'm going to want an embellishment here and an embellishment here. You could also do something fun on the sleeves if you want it. There's so many fun things you can do. And let me just think about how big I want this to be. I'm going to do it like two and a half I think I'm going to do it like two and a half the circle about two and a half this is where where I really struggle because I cannot cut a round circle to save my life You could also add like a contrasting fabric, um, but I'm going to show you, we're going to flip, and it's not as apparent on this particular sweatshirt material, but like I'm going to flip it. Um, this one only has three layers, but you can see um, depending on which direction you flip your sweatshirt material, it looks different. That's, that was my experimentation with the green sweatshirt, because that one has embellishments on it, it would be way too easy. You use a canning jar for the circles, that's brilliant, Anne-Marie. Okay, so these are not perfect. They're good enough. All right, and then I wanna do um, a piece with the cuff. And let's use this one, because I've already cut it up. This was the other sleeve. So I want it to be smaller than what I've got happening. And I'm just going to start cutting, and then I'll trim. What have I got going on here? Seam is making that really thick. Pin in a bit, 
because this, this stuff does want to kind of slip around a little bit. This pen is going to be way too long. Just going to start cutting a look. Okay, that's not a big enough difference between the two layers, so let's make this a little bit smaller and possibly more round. Deb, that's so smart. She says, when you take your ribbon off the original piece, save the different size circle and end pieces, and then you will have a pattern. Yeah, good idea. I am totally obsessed with this idea of making these cute sweatshirts. Really, I'm just more obsessed with the idea that I could actually have some sweatshirts that would be somewhat comfortable because the necks just drive me crazy, and then the long sleeves, um, and the fact that I can't ever roll them up comfortably, that bothers me too. So I see lots more sweatshirt and t-shirt projects in the future, and I'm learning as I'm going along. Okay, so I have two pieces, hopefully you noticed, and I have two pieces of this. Whoops. Um, and this is going with the idea that I'm making an embellishment for here and an embellishment for here. Okay, so I've got one layer of sweatshirt with the front side up, one layer of rib. And let's make a smaller circle. too big. If you have one of those Cricut machines, I don't. You know I don't have one of those as much as I would love to have one of those. Is I could not figure out the, the computer part, I'm sure. This does not have to be a perfect circle. It can be a little wonky. That is a-okay. I still want it to be a little bit smaller. Let me keep going. And I'm gonna turn on the um, fan in here because my lights, holy cow, they're hot. Plus, I might be hot flashing a little bit. <laughs> if you guys are liking this idea or this project, um, gosh, I would love it if you would sprinkle. I would also love it if you would check to see if you have liked and followed DIY Dreaming because I tell you what, we're like, this is crazy. This page is like 300 people, 300 followers away from a quarter million followers, from 250,000 followers. And um, that has been just living on the horizon for a very long time. Okay, so now on this next one, I did the, rib, I did the sweatshirt with the front up, and then I did ribbing, and now I'm going to do the sweatshirt with the inside showing. And I'm going to kind of layer them on here a little sort of wonky just to give them some interest. And now let's do one more, a really small ribbed circle for the center. 
And then guess what? We'll be adding buttons. Can you believe it? I know, that's so shocking that I would use buttons in my crafts. So if you had a Cricut, you could, I know you can do fabric on a Cricut. You could cut your pieces out and be way more precise than what I am being. All right, and um, I am going to, when I attach it, I'm gonna make sure that I have the ribbing laying a completely different di direction so it's not, um, it's not going the same direction. All right. Okay. So, then the next thing is the fun. And there's several different ways that you can do it, and this is what I have learned. This one I created using this fabric fuse. And it took a long time to dry, and also it kind of leaves, can you see, like a mark almost where it's glued together. And you're going to do like a spiral, okay? So I decided that I didn't like this. Also, I don't think I like this either. So we're going to get really brave. We're going to get a needle and thread out, and you can use the same color thread as your sweatshirt, or if you want it to be contrasting, you could use um, a black, or the embellishments change up the shirt for sure. So, and um, I just, <laughs> this is one of my all-time favorite projects. This was a needle book that I made several years ago, and this is another needle book that I just made recently. And this is my pin cushion. It's a vintage piece of silver. And I, I made that. Those were some crafts that we did here. So just to give you an idea of what I like to do here. Okay, so I'm going to, gosh, my thread is really wanting to tangle. I don't know what that's all about. Okay, so I'm gonna just start in the center. Go up and down a couple times. What am I making today? We're making some adorable sweatshirts. We are doing a makeover of a traditional sweatshirt into something that looks like this. It's got, gonna have an off-center neck and an off-center bottom, and it's got shorter sleeves. It's gonna be adorable. I probably should have gotten, whoops, purple or something so it would be easier for you guys to see. We're doing something similar to rosettes, but, but not traditional rosettes, although you, you certainly could do, this is a traditional rosette right here, made with um, drop cloth. Maybe we'll fiddle around and see how that would go. I have enough fabric. Or you could do something like this. The thing is, drop cloth tends to really fray in the washing machine, and so does canvas duck. And I wanted something that could be washed. So that is why I opted to do this. All right, and I'm just gonna start going up and down in the shape of a spiral. It is really, really bothering me. It's all twisty. What in the world? Hold this up in just a second. Huh? 
And this is going to kind of create some movement on your pieces and it's also going to help them be a little sturdier when you wash your sweatshirt. I never sew like this here on DIY Dreaming. I don't know if you knew I could even do that. Actually, I have a sewing machine. Um, I used to do a ton of sewing, but then I found other crafts that I liked just as much. I used to do a ton of crochet also. Um, so. Okay, so I'm just going from the center out like in a spiral. And I'm gonna keep going. And it's no special spacing in between um, stitches or anything. It's just totally random. Let me just get some of this in and then I will hold it up and show you. And if you're worrying about me or my hands shaking a little bit, let me just tell you that I did see a neurologist and I am A-OK. -okay. I have something that's not a big deal. It's just called essential tremors. Um, and he gave me a prescription, which is making it better. Um, so I don't have anything bad. Um, I haven't had too much coffee or too much sugar or anything today. This is just, it's a bummer when you're a crafter and you do that online and your hands are naturally shaky, but that's just how it is. Okay, I'm getting there and I'm gonna go just a little bit further. And really all I wanna make sure I'm doing is tacking down that second layer to the back. I've got the first and second layers tacked down, so let me just crank this out here. So when you're washing, the flowers are going to be so cute. I'm going to show you two different styles. The one I did earlier, I did five little buttons on it, and it is adorable. It is seriously adorable. This one, I think I'm going to just do one. But we're almost there. I really, really think that doing the stitching um, is the best option for this part rather than using the hot glue or the fabric fuse. And it's not that much trouble. It's really not. It's just awkward to do it while you're talking and filming a live video. Okay, let's say that we are good. And let me tell you something. Can you see how that has some dimension to it? I'm going to um, finish it off like this and leave it a little bit cinched up because I think it looks cuter than the one that I did earlier that I pulled all the stitching out flat. So I'm going to do three or four knots on the back. I know everybody does their, um, their in-stitch different. This is how my mom taught me. Okay. Look how cute that is. Isn't it? I even 
gonna like the size of this one better. Okay, let me show you the one that I made before I came live. Just, I always wanna make sure that my idea is gonna work. Oh, here it is. Before, and I may come back and stitch this so it's not so flat. I just did random placements of five little buttons on this one. But I do like this one better. So, then I pulled out the variety of buttons here. And I'm going to use a thread, and a needle and thread to put the button on in the center of this one. I'm just trying to decide. That would be cute. It's the perfect size. So I know somebody will ask me, where did I get these Mother of Pearl buttons? Um, I have been collecting buttons for a while now, a few years, and I am always on the lookout for them. I'm always, when I like to go to, um, I like to go to thrift stores and garage sales and antique malls and flea markets and stuff, and I'm always looking for buttons while they I'm there and I'm always asking the different vendors do you have any my favorite are these vintage mother of pearl that's what I like but um so I have purchased a lot of them at places like that and then I bought them on Etsy once they were ridiculously expensive I thought um, I have a friend now here in my local area that I call my button lady and she has an extensive button collection and she sells some buttons. And um, you could use, they don't have to be vintage. They don't have to be mother of pearl. They could be absolutely whatever you want. You guys, look how cute that is. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna come back off camera and I'm gonna do the other piece exactly the same with this sort of ruffled, cinched up, look to this flower because it really gives it some movement, I think. And then when I wash this, I will turn it wrong side out. And um, I will wash it on delicate, cool, you know, a short cycle. And then I will see how it looks and either turn it right side out and you know, line dry it or dry it on a hanger in my laundry room, or I might partially dry it that way, and then the last, you know, when it's almost dry, I might do five minutes of fluffing in the dryer. I don't know. Okay, so this is going to go right down here, and I think I am going to do another little blob of glue here to hold this down. Boy, I really hate the glue strings on this fabric glue. Okay, here's the neck. It's, um, it's off-center. And this is going to go right here. And I'm going to just sew it on. So let me get some more thread. Oh, I will model this for you. I'm going to just throw it over my head when I'm, when I'm nearly done. And um, let you see. And then I will also um, model it after I've laundered it once because you know you always learn something and part of what I'm doing here on DIY Dreaming is giving you ideas and inspiration and I'm showing you oops, how to do things but I'm also showing you sometimes what not to do so I'll, I'll learn a lot uh, by laundering these the first time I think they're going to be fine the lady who I saw do this originally, it was from a pin, not on pin, Pinterest, 
her name is, her business name is Stitches by Julia. She did all this, but with a sewing machine. Oh, thank you, Brenda. She says, you have such a cute idea. You have a great imagination. You know what? I'm always looking, always thinking, and always thinking with the thought, how could I do that and have it be easy? Oh my gosh, this is so cute. Have it be easy and have it be something that anyone could do. That you don't have to be, you know, whoops, you don't have to be a, um, expert or anything. Okay, what have I got going on here? I'm having thread issues today. Okay, let's cut this and start over. Where did I lose my needle to? It just fell off. Alright, well I will have to hunt that down. Let me get another piece of thread and I won't cut it so long. Find a needle. How many inches did you take off the sleeves? Okay, I cut the cuff and then I went up four inches because I was thinking about what length do I generally like my sleeves when I'm sort of rolling them up. Can I thread this one? It's teeny. It's really, really teeny. No, that's way too little. I love this one right here. Tell me in the comments. If you learn how to um, sew as a child, and who taught you? I think I started sewing with a needle and thread with my mom, and then I started using a sewing machine, I believe, with my grandma Belle. Oh, here's my needle. <laughs> okay, I don't want to lose that because it's a little one. Um, Anyways, I'd like to find where is my buttonhole? There we go. I may end up tacking some of this down with a little bit of this fabric hot glue. But for now, this is what we're going to do. Marianne says that her mom taught her she could even make Barbie clothes. I made Barbie clothes too. Oh my gosh. One of my grandmothers, my mamu, the late, the sweet grandmother that was a teacher and that gave me all the beautiful books. Um, she, I think it was her. She showed me how to make a super simple pattern that worked great for Barbie pants. And, you know, both grandmothers and my mom always had little scraps of fabric and I, we made a ton of Barbie pants and it's very simple little shirts and okay so this is what I'm going to do for right now is I just got it on 
I just sewed it on via the button in the center, but I do think it will need to be tacked down a little bit better. adorable what do you guys think this is um so I could also do something like just a button on either side of one of these little pieces on the sleeve to cinch it up a little bit and I will probably try to do one very similar to this for this bottom slice but let me hop off camera for just a second. I'm gonna leave my top on, but I'm gonna throw this over my head and we can see what we think. Ooh, these puffy sleeves are super uncomfortable under this. I would probably just wear a cami with this. But here we go. So what do you guys think? Imagine that I don't have this green top on underneath. That's not super low. Um, it does not look like a men's sweatshirt from Target anymore. That was $20. Oh, Melanie says she learned in Bluebirds. I also learned in Girl Scouts. We also did, we did, um, we crocheted and knitted and made baby booties and baby bonnets and all kinds of things. So, well, what do you guys think? So this is the second one that I have made. This was the first one. And because this had decorative stuff on it, I opted not to do the off-center neck or anything. Um, and I learned a lot about the sleeves that I think I fixed it the way I rolled these cuffs. Um, if you like your sleeves longer, you can of course, so I did the whole cuff and then four inches. You could do three inches, but you need to have enough inches here to give yourself <laughs> the fabric on the sleeve to make the embellishments. So it was the cuff plus four inches on, on this. And then I just cut the neck band and the bottom band off just below the stitching. So it will, it will look a little more finished. Kathy says she loves it. Okay, we'll do it this or this. If you like this project, I'm super excited. I am gonna be on the hunt for some more sweatshirts, and we'll do this again. We'll do it, we'll um, put a new spin on it of some sort. Um, I think the cuff, the cuff could be a candle sweater. What is a candle sweater? Oh, a candle sweater is where you kind of roll it up, right? So this is what I'm talking about. It would look like this. Whoops. Let me just, do a quick little blob of glue on here so that you can see what I'm even talking about. I can put that on after the fact. Oopsie. You see what I mean? Do it more out towards your elbow the way it would lay. But I think that could be super cute. Um, and maybe not too busy. Because this is sort of all monochromatic, it doesn't look super busy to me, to my eye. Anyways, so sprinkle, sprinkle. Look to see if you have liked and followed this page so that we can get to that 250,000 followers a little quicker. Um, if you have friends that like these kind of quick and easy crafts, a lot of times they're gonna involve flowers of some sort. This sort of reminds me of a flower. 
um, if they like faith themed crafts, then tell them about DIY Dreaming. Tell them on Sundays I do Christ and Crafting, which is my favorite day to craft. And on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursdays, I have a devotional called Go For It, which is a book that was written by this lady named Melissa Horvath. And it's just short little daily devotions about how to boldly live the life that God has created uniquely for each one of us. Oh, okay. So I, the candle embellishment, I understand now what you're saying. I call those candle garters. So we could create some candle garters out of this stuff. Yes, indeed. For sure. All right. Well, you guys have a blessed, yeah, it's called Go For It. Melanie says she loves the devotional. It's been so good. Um, so tell your friends about this page. Like and follow it. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I'm going to get together a supply list, and I'll make sure that I give you, like, what the name of this stuff is, what the name of this kind of glue is. These are men's sweatshirts. I can't really tell you where the buttons came from because they've just come from all over, but there's nothing complicated here. Um, and I'll also include a replay. So if you missed the start and you want instructions, the best thing to do is just to click on the replay button and watch the video from the start. It's, I think it's going to be too hard for me to explain. Rosemary, I will get you a supply list. Give me 10 minutes to get that together. And I will see you guys later. Have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day. Be looking for more pictures and I will see you guys later.